Hey, Hope Church family. I know that this is a weird Wednesday night, uh, but I, I, we're very excited. We're excited that this is a different kind of change of pace. It's almost like a returning back to the way that things happened in the first century. I think about Acts chapter 2, verse 42, that says uh, they devoted themselves in, in homes and in temple courts. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the breaking of bread, together to fellowship and to prayer. And tonight, our church just wanted to give you an opportunity to center yourself, center your family, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, whether you're at a coffee shop or whether, we're probably not at a coffee shop, we're pretty much quarantined, uh, or wherever you are, um, if you're with your family or if you're by yourself, we just wanted to center us together around the Word of God together. And so I, I wanted to talk to you guys tonight about uh, a very famous sentence in uh, in a confession. It's called the Westminster Confession. And it tells us very clearly, God tells us all throughout Scripture, that all of creation has one, one purpose. And that purpose is to know God and enjoy Him forever. To know Jesus and enjoy Jesus forever. Um, it's all throughout Scripture. And if we believe that that's true, and if we believe that the Bible is true, we must also believe things like John 10.10 10, that says that there is a thief who comes and he's coming to steal and kill and destroy us. And that's bad news, that we have an enemy that wants to keep us away from this end, knowing God and enjoying God. He, that is his primary purpose. The reason that we all exist is to know God and enjoy him. And the reason that Satan exists is to keep us from that. But a lot of times, I don't know about you, a lot of times he doesn't do it by uh, making us feel privy to some very deep, dark secret or bad sin or terrible, gross sin. He, he, doesn't, uh, he doesn't do it as, do it by making us doubt things about the reality of God in our lives. Like we all agree, we all know that Jesus was a person, that he died and that he was rose again. He, he, doesn't, he doesn't do it through that. Uh, but he does it in very small and subtle ways. And so the, the purpose that Satan exists is he says, hey, listen, if you want to enjoy God, if you want to know, pursue an intimate relationship with him, go for it. Just make sure you look good while you're doing it. Make sure you dress the right way. Make sure you know what you're doing in life. And because you know what you're doing in life, you got to go to the right college. And because you're going to the right college, you got to have a good college application. And with that college application, make sure that you ha it looks good. You've got the right extracurricular activities. So you play the right sports. You're a part of the right um, clubs. You uh, go to the right college. You got to move to the right city because you're going to the right college. Cities are expensive, so you got to get a job, and then you got to get a roommate, and you got to get a lot of roommates. You and then roommate drama, and uh, you got to go get a second job to afford all of that. And in the middle of all of that, you meet somebody, and you go on a date, and you go on another date and more dates, and then you meet her family, and then you meet his family, and then uh, you gotta think through, oh my gosh, are we gonna get married? Keep on coming. Uh, are we gonna get married? And uh, what is that gonna look like? Are we gonna live in the, in, in the suburbs? Are we gonna live in the city? Are we going to, uh, are we gonna have, what type of kids, how are we gonna parent? What, are, what am I gonna do for a job? How are we gonna, what are we gonna afford? Are kids gonna go to pr public school, private school? Are they gonna go to, um, you know, what type of university? Where are we gonna go to church? Are uh, we going to, uh, are we gonna have the right type of bills? Are we gonna have health insurance? What type of health insurance? What type of life insurance? Grocery bills, oh my goodness, that's it anxiety. Uh, we, we got to keep ourselves quarantined from Corona. Uh, we've got, we've got all of these things. There's health insurance, car insurance, diapers, life insurance, all of it. And it goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on. And it's not that in any of that, we ever stopped doubting that God was good or that he was real or anything. We didn't start to not believe in him. We just lost him in the mess of all of this stuff. And these are problems. 
and none of these are necessarily bad. It, grocery bills, that's not a bad thing. We have to have groceries, we have to eat. You're telling me, okay, Chris, what you're telling me is I need to get rid of my kids. That's what you're telling me. No, that's not what I'm saying. It's not our problems are not necessarily the problems. A lot of times, and what scripture is actually gonna teach us today is that it's not the problems that's, that's the problem. It's not the stuff that's coming our way. It's our anxiety. It's our worry about all of this stuff. That's the issue. And so in a day and an age that is filled with panic and chaos, I want to talk about peace. I want to talk about peace. And so um, if you have a Bible, I want to invite you to turn to Philippians chapter 4. That's where we're going to be. Um, We're going to be in Philippians chapter 4. We're just going to read a few verses. And and let me just kind of read to you um, Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 8. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Don't be anxious about anything. Worry about no thing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, make your requests known to God. Let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable or just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there's anything excellent, if there's anything worthy of praise, think on these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, walk in these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Lord, in our few short moments today, would you, um, would you enlighten this passage, bring this passage to life today in us? We love you. We thank you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we live in a day and an age um, that is filled, uh, filled with anxiety. Uh, Time magazine reports that in this moment, 91% of Gen Z, Generation Z, the next generation, where our student ministry, Gen Z, is, uh, is stressed. And that is more than double of any generation that precedes. Um, not millennials, no, uh, not Gen X, not the boomers. No one has ever been as stressed as we are in today's culture and in today's time. Anxiety is the number one cause of seeking medical and mental help today. And it's the number one disorder diagnosed today. Anxiety, worry. Worry in the heart creates many sinful states of mind. Uh, Worry about your grades will lead you to cheat. Worry uh, Worry about your finances will lead you to make unethical decisions. Uh, I mean, gracious, just look at the grocery stores today. Worry about coronavirus will lead to an epidemic and a a shortage of TP, of toilet paper. Charmin is about to boom, guys. It's going to be great uh, for them. Bad for the rest of the world. Um, Rutgers did a study uh, on 32 different universities, and they said that 74% of business students cheat. 68% of all other students cheat. Um, I don't know why the business students were, are higher, maybe more honest about it. And they're like, yeah, of course I cheat. It's how I get ahead in life. I don't know. Um, Anxiety or worry about your dating will lead you to compromise. Uh, This person doesn't really remind me of Jesus, but it's the best around. So I definitely don't want to be alone. So I'm just going to settle here. Persistent anxiety or pressure on the soul leads people to find ways of escape. And so maybe this, um, this smoke will take it off. Maybe this drink will take off the edge. And I need somewhere to escape from all of the anxiety, the pressure on the soul. And I need something to release it. Anxiety can quite literally kill you. Anxiety raises risk of early death by 20%. Jesus tells us in Matthew 6, don't be anxious about anything. But seek first the kingdom of God, and I'll take care of the rest. Matthew 6, that's what Jesus says. Don't be anxious about anything, but in everything, would you just seek first the kingdom of God? 
Jesus himself, Jesus himself contrasts anxiety and seeking, putting our attention, our focus, our mind on godly things, on the kingdom of God at work. Listen, you were created to know Jesus and to make him known, to know him, enjoy him forever. We, we have something that we present the world. We bring the world Jesus. That's, that's who we are. That's why God just didn't beam us up whenever we asked Jesus in our heart because he left us here for a purpose. But um, anxiety can be a hindrance and a barrier to us. Worry can be a barrier to us presenting Jesus to the world. The world is not impressed when we sing of the Prince of Peace, but we live lives of worry. Sing of the Prince of Peace, but live lives of anxiety and stress. And so today I want to, uh, I want to, I want to give you a personal example. Um, I, I was, I was thinking through, uh, there was a season uh, a short time ago where I've never really been known as someone who is very anxious about anything. I'm pretty uh, like a freelance kind of free roaming guy. I, I'm not super, um, I, I don't get super stressed, but there was something, some things that happened in life and uh, in our personal lives that was going on. And I, it led me to have anxiety attacks. I've never had anxiety, anxiety attacks. I was just like, I don't even know what's going on. Things were rushing around. I was freaking out. I, I didn't know what to do. Uh, and I had four anxiety panic attacks in, in, in 12 hours. And I, I, I didn't know what was going on. Didn't know what was going on. Um, and so this passage, this Philippians 4 passage, quite literally brought, uh, came to life in my mind and helped me walk a path of peace in an age of panic. And, and today, that's what I want to give us. This evening, that's what I want to give us. Path of peace in an age of panic. And I'm not saying that these are your four steps to getting out of um, anxiety. Uh, this is just an ancient path that Jesus walked and Jesus gave to us. In an age of craziness and chaos, how do we submit our lives to the control of Jesus? In an age of panic, how do we submit, how do we live a life of, of, of the Prince of Peace ruling in our lives? And so um, read with me. We're going to start in Philippians uh, chapter 4. We're going to start in verse 4, and I just want to bring out some things. We're not going to be here super long, um, but, but this is kind of what I, I, I want us to walk through. Philippians 4. Uh, we'll start in verse four. It says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I'll say rejoice. Are you telling me that right now, Chris, in the midst of this, I, I have never stopped and I'm forced into my home and uh, the, the world is, is, is going crazy right now. There's not a lot of good news being shown on the TV. Uh, there's a lot of people who just think that this is the end of the world. Is this the end of the world? I don't know. Is it? Um, Right now, the Lord, his command is to rejoice, always, always. And so maybe right now you need to even think through your mind. Instead of just focusing in, there's a tendency in all of us to downplay the benefits of our current situation and to upplay the worries and the stress and the things that could go wrong. So maybe right now we should maybe even just press pause on the video and let's write out. 10 to 15 things that we can rejoice in, that we would take our minds off of all the panic and think of the present, the presence of God. And he's near. And that's reason enough to be rejoiced. That's that's reason enough to give joy. And that will bring joy in our lives. Verse 5 says, Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord's at hand. And then it says, Do not be anxious about anything. Or, better, better translation is, be anxious about no thing. No thing. There's the command right there. God has never called us to worry. He, he's not calling us to worry now. He's not calling us to, to be anxious about this present circumstance or this difficult time. Uh, he is not called in, calling us to worry about anything. But in everything, so what are you telling me to do? Uh, my entire life, the entire world is full of panic right now. What do I do? In everything, pray. 
But in everything, by prayer and supplication, let your requests be known to God. Chris, you're telling me that the key, the, the fix, is to pray. Okay, all right. Yeah, that's a very churchy answer, Chris. Well, before you bash this one, and I don't believe you're bashing it, but if anyone is, before you bash it, let me just ask you, how's whatever you're doing to deal with the stress working? Um, I did a study about the ways that people deal with stress, and the top, the top one was... Um, <laughs> Uh, don't be anxious about anything, but in everything, go to the pantry and and eat. Now, we stress eat. That's kind of the common phrase is we're going to stress eat. Um, in a very stressful season, whenever Shelby and I, whenever we first moved to um, moved here to, to serve here at Hope Church, we moved with a five-day-old, and uh, we walked into a very kind of crazy situation. Everything was changing. Our financial situation was changing. The stress of our marriage was changing because uh, we were bringing life into the marriage, uh, life into it. We were job career changing. So in every situation, everything was changing. We were just in a world of change. And, uh, and somebody asked us, um, what, what, have you, what are you guys eating since you've been here? <laughs> and without hesitation, I said, my feelings. And I was, I was kind of just joking. Uh, but then at that same point in time, I, I, I realized, oh my God, I run into the pantry. I run into to the fridge instead of running to the Lord. And, uh, and I think that that's what some of us, a lot of us do, and it's not working out for us. It's not. Um, or maybe maybe it's it is something a little bit more serious. Maybe to deal with these to deal with the stress. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm running not to the Lord, not to the pantry. I'm running to a bottle. Uh, I'm running to a pill, or I'm running to something to take the edge off of the craziness of this world. Uh, the every generation has kind of had a, a a phrase that that characterized the makeup of this their generation and gen z uh tim elmore who studies generational tendencies um he says that gen z's phrase that kind of characterizes it is i'm coping and i'm hoping I, there's so much coming at me the pressure and the anxiety is so much there's so much coming at me all the time the best thing that I know how to do is I just know how to cope. So I think a question that I would have, and maybe you just even need to press pause again, and just write down, where do I run to in times of stress? Is it to the Lord? Philippians 4, uh, verse 6 says, Be anxious about no thing. But in everything by prayer and supplication. The word prayer there is, is the most generic term used in the Greek language for creating space for God to speak. Creating space for God to speak. How? Here's something that we can be rejoiceful for. I know that sounds weird. Your life, my life, everyone's life in the entire world has been forced to a halt. I saw, a, I saw a kind of funny post the other day that said, uh, your grandparents were called to war. You're called to sit on the couch. You can do this. Um, and so one of the things that, that I've been thinking through is we live lives of busyness and stress, and we're moving all the time. We're going. We, we, live, uh, we live a life kind of like an octopus on roller skates. Uh, there's a lot of action, but we're not really going anywhere. We've gotten really, really good, good at busy but none of us are really satisfied with where we are in life. We're really busy. We're time poor, but we're not pleased with the outcome, with the, with the efficiency of where we are. The Navy SEAL has a, has a phrase that says, slow is steady, and steady is fast, and fast is deadly. So a lot of us, we wake up in the morning. We wake up in the morning and we're, we gotta, we gotta go. We gotta get to the meeting. We gotta, we gotta get dressed because we gotta talk to people. We gotta do these things. And I, I don't know about you. In the mornings, I don't necessarily wake up and my heart doesn't just want to sing the praises of God. 
um, uh, a lot of times in the morning, my, my, my life doesn't look a lot like this vase. You see these still waters? You see this? Uh, so peaceful, so calm. It doesn't, it doesn't necessarily look like this. A lot of times I wake up and within 0.2 seconds of me kind of becoming coherent, in the morning, the stresses of this life. I've got meetings today. Oh my gosh, I've got to do this with my children. Uh, a lot of the stress and the anxiety is coming at me very, very fast. And, and a lot of times what we do is that instead of, uh, instead of just being able to sing the praises, that's just not me. I'm going to be honest. I don't wake up in the morning and say, oh, another chance to glorify my maker. Oh, that's just not me. I don't think that's you either. But here's what I do think that happens is I think a lot of times we wake up and we're so ready. We got to get there because, uh, because we don't believe that slow is steady. We believe that fast is, is deadly. And we get so ready that all we do is we bottle our feelings. So even at church, how you doing? I'm great. I'm awesome. And we're bottling, we're pushing down all of these anxieties and stresses that we have, and we're just not dealing with them. And it's not working. It's not working. Uh, and so we say, I'm doing great. I'm awesome. He's so good, isn't he? And we're pushing all of these things. Not today, Satan. We're pushing them down. And, and what I love about this verse, Philippians 4 says, don't make your request be known to God. It's not an active term. What it says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, he says, be anxious about nothing and everything by prayer and supplication. Let, it's passive, let your requests be known to God. It says, these things want to get out want to come out. So how am I creating space? How am I slowing down? We have an incredible gift that the, our world has been pushed to a stop. And I think one of the w ways that we can waste it is by continuing to try to just push our things, push our anxieties down. Open them up. Let them be known. They, let them rise to the top because when they're at, at the top, in the morning when I wake up, I can, I can create space. I can pray what that word says. And then I can ask God to supply my needs. That's the word supplication. So in everything by prayer, creating space for God to speak into my world, into my life, into my existence. And supplication, let him know what I need. God, I'm worried about this. I've got a meeting today. I'm worried about this meeting. I can't control it anyway, but you can. And when when they rise to the top, I can let them be known to him. And so I think one of the best things that you can do is in the morning when you first wake up to, to create space and say, how do you feel? Ask God, write it down. How do you feel? What am, I, am I anxious about anything? What am I worried about? And then I can do what God says. Give these things over to the God who sees and cares for the birds and much more. He cares for me. He cares for us. And I can take these things and I can give them to them. And that's really kind of the first thing that I can do is, um, is I, can, I can give these things over to him. And so that's the first step in a path of peace, the path of peace. Um, let me dry my hands a little bit before we can continue. And I think when we do that, um, we see we see that God's in control. I read an article about even the, the pandemic and the panic that's going around in America right now. This is the, one of the first times in history that we've ever just halted things like this. And, and the article was, um, it was kind of funny, the article, it, it had all capital uh, P-A-N and then in lowercase it had D-E-M and uh, at, in caps again it had I-C. And so it said pandemic. P-A-N-I-C was capitalized, and it just said pandemic or panic, the psychology of powerlessness. We're powerless to this. We can't stop it, and that's why we're so anxiety-driven. Is It's not in my control, and we want to control everything in this day and age, but the quicker that we realize I'm not in control of anything, the quicker that we can loosen our grip on this world and trust Him. And that's what this does, is when we let our requests, let our anxieties be known to Him. The things that are coming up, don't bottle them up. Let them be known. That's the first thing to do. And then the second thing is, is to keep going. And what I love about this, it says in the verse 7, the peace of God, 
Verse 7, the peace of God what, that surpasses all understanding is going to guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Paul, when he's writing to the Philippian church, is he is a, um, he's, he's in prison right now. And uh, he's it, like, the peace of God is kind of like, it's kind of like Bob, my security guy. He's not letting me go anywhere. He's not letting anything get to me. And that's what he's saying. The peace of God is going to guard your hearts. It's going to be kind of like a bouncer or a security guard. It's going to say, weird boyfriend, get out of here. Stress of the day, nope, not here. You're not coming. And it's going to guard my heart. That's what the peace of God is going to do. I love that. And so I'm just going to empty myself, become a still vessel before him. But here's, here's what I want to I want to I want to give you as well. That's where a lot of religion stops is just to empty yourself. Eastern meditation, that's the best that they have to offer is, is empty yourself, meditate, just empty your mind. It's like, okay, well, I'm a blank slate. What am I supposed to do? And that's not where the path of peace that Jesus gives us stops. That's not where he stops. He says, yes, empty yourself. But then he says in verse eight, finally, brothers, whatever's true, whatever's honorable, whatever's just, whatever's pure, whatever's lovely, whatever's commendable. If anything is excellent, if there's anything worthy of praise, think on these things. And so the, the first step is release, release these anxieties. But then the second step is to embrace, to embrace, to embrace the truths and the things that God has for me. Jeremiah Burroughs is an old Puritan. And, and what he says is, uh, he says, um, he says, you know what? You can't, you can't pour wine into a shaky vessel. You can't, it, it's not going to work. You're going to spill a lot of good stuff. And, and there's things that God wants to do in your life. And there's things that he wants to pour into you and truths he wants to put into your existence, into who you are. He wants to fill your mind with. And that's the importance of that slowing down. The slow is steady, steady is fast, and fast is deadly. That we're not an octopus on roller skates, that we would still ourselves, and then God would pour his truth into us. And so this is this first thought is, verse 8, what are some ways, what are some ways that, that you can still yourself, and what are some things that God would want to pour into you? How? How about in this day when we're quarantined and when we're social distancing our, ourselves, when we're meeting together as families, what would it look like for us to center ourselves around, around him, who's the altogether lovely one, who's the one who's most excellent, most worthy of praise? He is the lovely, pure thing. And what would, we, what if, what would happen if we just let him fill our minds with the truth of God? that I wouldn't pay attention to things that are panic rising, but that I would put my mind's attention and my heart's affection on Him. That I would think on lovely, right, pure, commendable, praiseworthy, excellent things. And then the last thing is verse 9, what you've learned and what you've heard what you've seen, what you've received from me, walk in these things. So first kind of thing, the first, first couple steps to the path of peace, uh, number one is release your anxiety. Let them go. Let them be known. And then after you empty yourself, would you embrace, would you fill up your heart? And then the third thing is not just be a hearer. Don't just put it in your mind, but let it take root in your heart and, and let, it, let it go to your hands and to your feet. And walk in these things. What are some ways that you can walk? And, and here's the promise. I love this. Verse 7 says, Once you release your anxieties, the peace of God will with, be with you. But once you fill your heart with lovely, true, godly, God-given things, and once you begin to walk in these things, not just the peace of God will be with you. Look at the vast, last line of verse 9. It says, And the God of peace will be with you. 
How wonderful is that? that? That not just the peace of God will be with you, but the God of peace will be with you. God himself will indwell and be with you when you put them in your heart, put them in your mind and put them in your heart. When, you, when it goes to not just be a hearer of the word, but to be a doer of the word, that I'm walking in the truths that he set out for me, that this is the path of peace in an age of panic. Hey, listen, as we kind of wrap up and conclude our time today, I don't know whether you've been sitting by yourself at, at the breakfast table or at the coffee table or wherever you are, and you've been spending time with the Lord by yourself, or whether you've been re- sitting around a couch and watching this with your family, I, I'm not sure. But um, wherever you've been, we have attached some discussion questions wherever you're watching this. So if it's on the Facebook, it's in the captions. If uh, if it's on email if, if you're clicking the link on email then the discussion questions are are tapped in those things if you're by yourself have a discussion with God have a small group with God in this moment and talk with him about the discussion questions that we've attached and then um, and then the other thing that I would ask is if you're with a family talk about that thing together and uh, we're we're so excited thank you for watching and and we're excited to see what it would look like for us to be agents of peace and in an age of panic and um, we love you and let me pray for us as we wrap up our time um, here this evening lord you're not surprised you're not worried you're not caught off guard by anything going on in this life and uh, and what you say in scripture is clear this is happening for our good and there are moments for us to rejoice there are things for us to take hold of so lord help us to present our requests to you Um, and to let our anxieties release them, to embrace you, and to walk in your truth. And uh, Lord, thank you for this time. Thank you for our church, a body of believers that are banding together, banding together, that we're coming together for, um, for a greater cause. And you are that greater cause. Lord, help us to know you and enjoy you forever. It's in your name we pray. Amen.